<laughs> oh goody! Look who's back for more. So it seems that the cult leader wants me to open up another can of whoop ass on him. Um, <laughs> I'm fully prepared to do that. The only question is, is he going to agree to reasonable terms? My prediction is no, because Hannibal the victor, my man, um, challenged the cult leader to a debate not very long ago, and bye. <laughs> and he set forth some very reasonable terms, terms that were pretty similar to the ones I replied to the PM with. Um, I sent my terms of debate to the cult leader via PM a few minutes ago. These terms encompass venue, subject of debate, and potential moderators. And the terms I set forth are very similar to the terms that Hannibal set forth. Um, and as far as I know, as far as I've been able to tell, the cult leader has all but ignored Hannibal's offer. So I, I predict that he's, he's not going to agree to the terms I've set forth, no matter how reasonable or how neutral. Because it's pretty clear that this guy will not engage in discussion at a venue that he cannot completely monopolize, that he cannot completely control the flow of. And you see how that ends up? Before I reveal the terms that I set forth in my response to him, let me just re-emphasize what a debate is and what a debate is not. Because it seems that the cult leader's idea of what a productive debate is, is warped beyond any kind of reasonable standard. So here it is, sweet cheeks. A debate is a discussion. Discussion. And a discussion involves one person talking, the other person responding, and, and, and the two people listening to each other, yeah, listening, and, and actually allowing each other to finish their thoughts. That's, that's the basic, very rudimentary aspects of an actual legitimate debate. Now what a debate isn't is somebody presenting their argument and then the opponent interrupting with a straw man or a childish insult. That's what a debate is not. So just let that marinate okay? Because if that's not what you're looking to do, then you are not looking to debate. You're looking to antagonize. That's all it is. Now that that is out of the way, here are my terms. Venue. We can do this at one of two places. We can do it in Hate Club, or we can do it at you now, which was formerly Blog TV. I'll put links to both venues in the description box, so you can check them out for yourself. But I can pretty much guarantee these are venues that are not going to put either of us at any kind of advantage or disadvantage. Now, potential moderators. I'm going to put forth either 
Uh, and, and either and any of these moderators can feel free to accept or decline, but I am pretty sure a couple of them have moderated debates before, debates that I have actually viewed, and they moderated properly, as opposed to what your so-called moderators do, which is basically they stand by and wait for you to call on them to validate your arguments. And that's not what a moderator actually is supposed to do, honey. So listen closely. A moderator only intervenes into the discussion when one party is not giving the other party adequate time to finish their thought. So just also let that marinate a little bit because you have some pretty warped ideas about what debates and moderators are. Term number three, subject of debate. You have to attempt to prove how and why women are apparently inherently inferior to men as a whole. Good luck with that. <laughs> Term number four, back up your arguments with actual evidence, i.e. evidence that isn't your limited personal experience. I want to see some studies. I want to see some stats. Give me, give me something. Give me something besides, I've seen this, or I've talked to people who've said this. Give me something that isn't cherry-picked. Term number five. Submit your sources to me well in advance of the debate so that I may review them and prepare some responses. Send me some tentative dates. I can tell you right now, I'm only going to be available Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. I have a life. Going to college, and no, I'm not majoring in women's studies. I'm tired of people asking me that. I'm majoring in music. Take that what you will. I really don't give a shit about what you think is and is not a frivolous major. Um, but that's besides the point. I have a job. And I go to school. And I have an internship. I'm a busy lady. Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. I can't do this coming weekend. I'm going back to my hometown. My sister's getting married. I gotta help her prepare for her wedding because I'm the maid of honor. Um, and I'm gonna be busy all weekend, so there's no way that the 21st is gonna work. Um, I would suggest mid-October. That'll give you enough time to come up with some credible sources, submit them to me, it'll give me enough time to review them, formulate some responses, and actually um, organize some rebuttals. And that'll give me also some time to find some counter sources. Those are my terms. Take them or leave them, cult leader. But just keep in mind, if you shy away from this, I'm not going to be the one looking like I can't handle my own in a neutral venue that I can't monopolize. If the worldview that you are touting is so factually sound and so correct and so justified, why, why should you not be able to beat me in a debate on neutral territory? You should have nothing to worry about, right? If, if what you're saying is actually sound. So if you don't take me up on these terms, I'm, I'm just going to have to assume, along with a lot of other people, that you are not some pillar of, you know, courage and masculinity and strength and intelligence and rationality. I'm waiting. Come at me, bro.